What's going on there folks? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this Monday, August 29th, 2022. It's about 12.40 p.m. California time. Uh, latest quake shows a 1.1 earthquake up into the region of Alaska. Uh, this comes in after a uh, little bit of activity ramping up here around New Zealand, showing uh, quite the cluster of earthquakes here, mostly around North Island, New Zealand, into portions of the Kermadec Trench, where they've seen a 5.8 earthquake strike uh, just a short time ago. This originally came in as a 6.1 earthquake here along the Kermadec Trench at about 31 kilometers deep into this area. Uh, this region of the Kermadec Trench has been relatively quiet in terms of anything above 4.0 uh, for quite a while. Uh, and considering all the adjustment we've seen around the Pacific Plate in general, uh, it's only a matter of time before this finally catches up. And it looks like we're starting to uh, so I would be advised to watch for some uh, possible further activity along this region here of the Pacific Plate Boundary, uh, New Zealand area. Um, let's see what else they had. I believe they had some smaller earthquakes, but not showing up here on the EMSC model. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out the uh, world view real quick um, across the uh, EMSC chart. I'll have to zoom in here to New Zealand and uh, double check see what we got going on out here. Uh, I know I've seen quite a few twos and threes on the map uh, earlier and it looks like uh, we're filling in nicely here. Um, quite a few low grade threes are within this region so things definitely on the heightened uh, level right now within that area. All right what else we got uh, right around the Papua New Guinea area still seeing some activity as well. Um, see what we got. Zoom in a little bit closer. Got a 5.1 kicking up overnight. Looks like a uh, 4.8 as well. Generally uh, pretty active over the last 24 or 48 hours within this area around the Philippine plate. Uh, got a little activity overnight. Looks like around Guam that kicked up a 5.7. Uh, this is right around the uh, Mariana Trench. 126 kilometers deep for that 5.7 so things really starting to uh, get moving here uh, not only at the surface levels but also down into the trenches into the subduction zones uh, south of the philippines here got a couple of earthquakes in the four range including upper 4.9 into the indonesia area uh, just outside of the uh, maluka sea a lot of deep activity though notice in, in this region as well had a 400, and, uh, 400 kilometer deep uh, 4.2 uh, down here around the Banda Sea. This one coming in uh, looks like earlier this morning. Uh, about three hours or so ago within that area. So uh, just be on guard. Still seeing some activity around the Java Trench. Uh, looks like a pretty good swarm of activity. 5.7, 5.9. Uh, this activity was from uh, last night. Looks like we're still starting to uh, see some aftershock sequ sequences, though, uh, following those two larger quakes last night. Again, a 5.7 and a 5.9 kicking up here. Uh, I believe one of these earthquakes originally came in as a 6.3. Uh, I think my last last night's update was in uh, in relation to that earthquake there, but it looks like it got downgraded a little bit. Quite a few fours kicking off there as well. Uh, but uh, again, Java Trench, a major player in producing some large earthquakes and uh, it accumulates a lot of stress in a short amount of time in that area. Um, just a Japan area, 5.4. This one coming in overnight as well. Let's go ahead and check out the West Coast. We're uh, starting to see a little activity as well right around the uh, kind of just offshore of Northern California. I uh, had a 2.8, 3.3, and also a 4.5 here at the Gorda Plate. Uh, this is the Gorda Plate up here, little small microplate. Uh, so Gorda Plate and the Pacific Plate Boundary. Pretty shallow earthquake, but very typical here along this along this plate boundary. Uh, 4.5 at 10 kilometers. Also seen low activity further to the east. This one struck, looks like... Uh, well, late uh, afternoon yesterday, a little 2.8. And also up here around the Blanco Fracture Zone, seen a 3.3. Uh, that one was from yesterday as well. So a little bit of new activity. Still watching that pretty closely. We've been seeing a lot of tremor activity along the entire section here of the Cascadia Subduction Zone, down dip uh, into the Cascadia. 
So, uh, you know, obviously when, when you get that type of event going on for uh, quite a while, it does ultimately add stress upstream uh, and also further back to the west here with that ongoing trimmer. Uh, let's see what we got. Some of this activity here from yesterday, it looks like a 3.4 and a 2.8. Let's go ahead and check out the all magnitudes map here and see if we got any major swarming going on or unusual activity to report. Uh, looks like a very typical day in California currently. Not a whole lot of renewed activity throughout the eastern Sierra Nevada yet. Uh, getting a little swarm though. Within this little canyon area or this little valley, however you want to look at it, near Bella Vista. Got about 26 earthquakes uh, kicking off. Uh, looks like overnight and this morning time frame. We did see a little bit uh, last night as well. Uh, I believe a 3.4 is the largest sequence or largest earthquake in that little sequence there outside of the uh, Bella Vista area Southern California not a whole lot going on folks this is very minimal in terms of earthquake activity here on, on any given day this is very uh, uh, very minimal compared to standard background activity in California so uh, just quiet for now up there uh, Yellowstone National Park of course you know we've had a little bit of swarming uh, kicking off there looks like they've reported uh, some of these earthquakes, finally, some of the microquakes uh, overnight and yesterday time frame. Not for certain, though, if they included all of them. Um, it looks like they kind of filled in a few of them. They got 104 earthquakes within the last week at Yellowstone National Park. Now, this is an ongoing swarm. The largest event so far uh, appears to be just a couple low-grade threes and some other twos in the mix as well. So, But, uh, hey... A round of applause for uh, for those folks um, working to get those magnitudes out and their location set, uh, the USGS folks there. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview real quick, see if we got the ongoing swarm going today. Um, this See, this is the Yellowstone overview um, with seismograph stations placed pretty much all around the park area. Uh, the Yellowstone caldera here is in the black line, kind of a circular type shape. Lake Yellowstone over here in the blue water. The swarm has been ongoing at the northwestern corner of the park, just outside the Yellowstone caldera. Uh, and I've kind of pinpointed it right around the Holmes Hill area, far as the most uh, localized station that uh, is monitoring this activity and picking it up. Uh, including all these other little smaller microquakes. So these guys had, uh, what, what they have, about a hundred and uh, 104 earthquakes over the last week. Uh, you could probably triple that number uh, if you want to count every single one of these microquakes. This is just the last 24 hours here. So if you were to go and count every single one of these spikes, you would probably tally up um, close to, well, I don't know, maybe a good 50 or 60 earthquakes here just in the last 24 hours. Um, maybe more. But if you look at the previous day, uh, day number four, we got more of the same, actually a little bit more. So you could probably add another 60 or 70 earthquakes onto that tally. And we're already over the, uh, the, um, that count for these folks. Uh, you know, it, it does take a little time to count all these other microquakes in there, but 105, again, um, my guesstimate is probably, and looking at this raw data, is probably closer to three or 350 earthquakes uh, with this ongoing swarm. And this is yesterday. This goes on um, for three more days prior to this. Uh, but currently right now in the Yellowstone area, it's ongoing day number five. And uh, over the last couple hours, you can still see that activity coming and going. And uh, yeah, pretty lengthy uh, earthquake swarm. Nothing big though, uh, but these swarms do pop off occasionally threes and fours. And we'll watch that continuously uh, as the uh, day progresses. All right, uh, what else we got here? Um, Pacific Northwest, a little activity up here. I can't can't really discredit this one. I kind of jumped over this earthquake here, 1.5 offshore um, of Oregon. Uh, and it's a little bit closer into the locked area of the Cascadia. Now, they, there's many other uh, fault systems that kind of work their way inland. But this here is the entire Cascadia fold and thrust belt. Basically, the um, the land here being warped and, and uplifted and little mountains and, and little hills formed from all that pressure. Uh, and all that pressure is building up. Uh, it's uplifting this land. And one day, this thing will produce a 9.0, possibly greater, uh, and drop this land back to a, a little bit leveler um, elevation. 
Um, but that one, that earthquake right there is kind of a little odd one there. I always watch for these that kind of strike within the fold and thrust belt. Uh, let's see, a little activity across the Devil Mountain Fault System here, it looks like, again. But uh, no major swarming to report into the Pacific Northwest. Texas area, getting some movement outside of Pecos, Texas. Again, out there in the oil fields. Satellite view kind of shows us if you kind of go into it a little bit more closer. Kind of hard to spot these dry um, desert. Some of them are deserted. Some of them are still active out there, these oil pumping operations. Um, kind of hard to see them, though, if you look from a, from a uh, satellite perspective. But uh, upon closer inspection here, uh, they're very close to these ponds and injection wells. Uh, that's where these earthquakes are happening, and they will continue to happen for the foreseeable future. Um, Texas, uh, let's see what we got. Snyder, Texas, got uh, 03.0. Not for sure what's out here. Um, I don't see any uh, specific oil pumping operations out here. If they are, they're kind of covered up. But uh, this earthquake struck pretty shallow at about three kilometers. Uh, New Madrid zone and eastern portion of the country looks pretty quiet right now. Not a whole lot going on. South America region did see uh, a couple fours kicking off. Um, looks like overnight in yesterday's time frame. Nothing major going on there. The Atlantic Ocean pretty calm and clear. Puerto Rico, about the same here. Uh, 17 earthquakes or so within the region. No major activity to report there in that area. The Big Island uh, looks like um, pretty quiet. Uh, we got 14 earthquakes here on the map, but that's not that big of a deal. Normally it's in the 30 to 40 range uh, for just your typical daily activity. So we're looking at, uh, well, definitely half of that today. No major unusual activity to report there at the Big Island. Uh, let's see what we got. Solar weather activity, man. That thing is ramping up. And, and this is when I get excited because these things are popping off like crazy. Uh, 3088. You guys remember that, right? Sunspot 3088. Well, it hasn't gone away yet. It is still waving its flares at us. And it's popping off M flares like crazy still. This is 3088 down here. Southwestern uh, portion of the sun. It's still being uh, felt here on Earth with the uh, high frequency radio blackouts there from the DRAP map centered uh, on the daylight section of the, uh, the Earth here. Looks like centered right now over the uh, Puerto Rico area. Uh, no, not Puerto Rico, uh, uh, just offshore of the uh, South America region into the Caribbean areas all getting uh, some of that uh, blackout from the uh, flares that are kicking off here. Let me go over here and show you guys the, uh, well, these guys are pointing out a couple flares, but this is just the last um, M2 events the past 48 hours. But remember, there's been quite a few more than this. Probably counting up to about 15 or so now. Uh, there's that long duration M flare that's kind of kicking off right now currently. We did have a higher elevated and so far the largest one that uh, 3088 has produced. Uh, and M8, uh, what is it, 8.6, almost an X-class flare. I don't think um, uh, 3088 is uh, done yet with possibly producing an X-flare. But uh, even if it does produce a massive CME, it's far enough uh, aside, you know, on the western limb here that it would not affect Earth whatsoever. It would all be directed away from Earth. But uh, it's, st like I say, it's still sparking. Good old Sparky producing quite a few, uh, quite a few M flares, all these bad boys right here. Uh, long duration M flare last uh, yesterday, it looks like. But uh, we're still crackling with C flares and M flares. And this is when we get into the uh, potential for X flare categories. And uh, like I said, I think 3088 has that potential to produce an X flare before it's completely on the uh, other side of the sun. Uh, right now, 99% chance of a C flare, 55% chance of an M flare, uh, remaining elevated at X or 25% uh, chance for uh, X flare. Protons did come in late last night. We've seen a uh, that activity ramp up at the polar regions right now. Just a 50% chance of the proton event kicking in. 
Either way, uh, the Earth is definitely taking a, taking a little beating there, but we got a pretty strong magnetic field, and there's no doubt we'll block out all that radiation and whatnot. But as uh, far as the auroras go right now, there's not a whole lot of potential. Uh, these guys are kind of forecasting a three-day geomagnetic forecast of a little unsettled conditions here at the higher latitudes, but no major CMEs have been uh, directed at us that would enhance this to a, a much elevated level. Right now, things are just kind of uh, sparking, you know, with a with a flare activity. The only thing we have to watch for is the next flare, and that's uh, uh, the only thing that would do here is probably increase that uh, DRAP map for the high frequency blackouts. But again, any CMEs that that uh, 3088 would produce uh, is would be way way uh, directed away from us. Now there is a couple sunspots that are facing us right now, 3089. Uh, it's going to be this bad boy right here. Look at look at all this mixing and complex magnetic field activity that's ongoing. This is the one to watch currently if we're looking at the entire Earth side disk of the sun. Again, 3088 is way over here, out of view, but still again being active. These other sunspots here. This is the one that was inside that coronal hole, kind of died off, and uh, just didn't really do anything aside from looking pretty cool on some images. All these other sunspots up here, just very minimal. But this bad boy right here is growing, and uh, we need to watch this one pretty closely here. Uh, this is a little bit older. This is about 24-hour map, but when we click on the newer one, we can see that this is uh, definitely growing uh, and getting more complex every hour, it seems like. So 3088, or 3089, excuse me, is the one to watch right now. It does hold a Beta Delta class, and that could advance a little bit more and, and turn into a little bit more complex magnetic field. But uh, I still think we got a uh, potential to see an X flare from this bad boy. 10% chance that these guys are forecasting. And uh, it's definitely uh, will be geo effective if anything does pop off. Here you can kind of see uh, you can kind of see it a little bit. Nothing like 3088 uh, over here, but uh, gotta watch this area. It's getting it's growing. That's gonna be the one to watch here pretty closely. Um, again, current solar flare activity. We're just coming down from a long duration. A couple M flares there. One peaked out, uh, and then we had another one follow up. So, you know, X flare is not out of the question from these two sunspots. Uh, but the one we would have to watch for any large CME being Earth directed is 3089, the one currently uh, that is facing us right there and the uh, most probable threat. All right, guys, uh, have a good day. Got uh, quite a few more. Oh, school stuff to go over right now. Uh, busy, busy. It's Monday. So we're going to get busy on some uh, lectures and uh, quite a few other things right now. And we will chat you guys a little bit later on this evening. And, of course, if anything changes, any major earthquakes, any major solar events, we'll be back here uh, with an update. Have a good day, folks. Stay stay cool. It's supposed to be 100, about 102 today. And then, oh, my gosh, the forecast next weekend like 112 for a couple days here in california you know I, I don't live in death valley i live in northern california so i'm i'm tired of this heat i want rain i want fall i want winter but that's what i get living out here in california that, that that's gonna change though there's no doubt that will change soon all right guys have a good day we'll chat you guys a little bit later peace out